I'm an idiot. Well, yeah, that's not big news, but why in this particular case? Read the manual. So one of the important things that you should do on this is feed it power. And you can do that in two ways. One is where there's a plus five volt and ground connection here on this edge connector. And another is to close J3, which takes power from the motherboard. I'm not doing either of those. So there is no surprise at all that it didn't power up. What a tool. Right, put it back together. I've got the, the good socket in, uh, cables are all out of the way. Power, nine volts, uh, about 800 milliamps. I should get on the um, capture, I should get a gray screen. One, yes. Right, oh, I have probably not broken it. And with the game, please work, please work, please work. Yes. Right, so that's working. That board, I think, will work. Well, no, this isn't actually true. In this pass-through mode, the RGB board isn't actually doing anything. No spoilers for the further mockups, but displaying a composite signal in pass-through mode doesn't make this a working RGB NES board. The only real test of this is to complete the wiring and test the output from the RGB side of things. But he seems pleased with his progress. The only thing now I have to do is find, find my Mega Drive 2 cable so that I can plug it in here. Hopefully we should be good to go and I can see some RGB goodness. Oh, obviously I need to connect the wires. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get on with that. Let's do that. Found my cable. Very cheap, nasty one, so I might have to buy a new one to do the testing properly. The orange one. The C sync or something. I'll reflux these in a minute. That one. Gonna go down there like that. The RGB signal wires usually connect to the top edge connector with all the other wires, but in this case the RGB board has those signals going through the expected 75 ohm resistors you find in this type of situation to bring the signal down to a voltage level the display can cope with reliably. Oh, that's my finger. Well, Merlin Shaw pointed out that the Genesis Mega Drive 2 cable has those 75 ohm resistors built into it. Even my rubbish one does. So to avoid doubling up and making the image too dark, the RGB wires need to be connected to these points on the Tim Worthington board right before they go through those resistors. You could probably take the resistors out of the SCART cable, but then if you used a different cable for some reason, it wouldn't work correctly. With the wiring complete, as far as I was concerned, I switched it on, fully expecting it to work. My confidence born from the mistaken belief the board was working as I was getting the standard composite signal in pass-through mode. Well, it didn't work and I didn't record it. And for a while I went round in circles trying to work out exactly why. And this time, it wasn't my fault. Well, 
mostly not my fault. More me being an idiot, I'm afraid. Mostly it's down to read the game manual. The stage that I got to was uh, I plugged it in, expecting it to work, and it didn't work. Um, I'm not sure if I recorded that, but you can use your imagination. Now, the board from Merlin here has RGB out. It also has a composite out, and the composite out has a switch. This switch has internal and external video. So this switch position here, internal video is that way, and external video is that way. Internal video is the natural, normal pass-through um, composite for the NES, and external is the Tim Worthington's R NES RGB board. So with it in pass-through mode, if I switch it on, I get the game working with the external audio so this is using the composite derived from the rgb signal through the um, tim worthington's board I turn it on i just get a black screen and that's the same whether it's through the rgb port or the composite port so i contacted merlin and asked him for some advice uh, late last night so there might be some bags under my eyes and uh, this is uh, some of the things that he found. He, um, he noticed that I had no palette selected, so that needs to be done. Bridging ground and this 3L point, which I'm not sure that's actually needed, but we'll, I can experiment with that when I've fixed it. I didn't have J6 bridged. Uh, I, I had J7 bridged and I had J3 bridged. And we even try J9, which is up here. Uh, and I had J4 bridged. So he spotted all of that, but it didn't make any difference. I, I did a search and Merlin also pointed out that there's um, a, a potential problem with the reset circuit. When this turns on, it needs to, it needs a certain amount of time to start up. And if the NES has already started up before the board starts up, then it won't work. So it needs the NES to the NES to slow down a bit. But there is a, a row of LEDs here that can give you a status. I think the one, two, three, four, five, and six, I mean, uh, some of those um, are showing which palette is selected. I don't know what that one, I think that's just an on LED, but seven flashes a pattern to tell you what's wrong. So if I turn it on, there's a, bunch i think it's meant to only flash seven times but anyway it's it's flashed a bunch of times on seven which means that the reset circuit is not functioning as it should be found on etim.net.au this nes rgb version 4 which is the board that i have got and some extra instructions in here including the specific instructions for each machine so there's the top loader famicom original Famicom, Famicom Twin. So the front loader, the reset timing capacitor, C8 on my NES, motherboard may be different on others, is also connected to the reset signal. It is a 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor. It must be replaced with the 220 nanofarad capacitor, marked 224, supplied in the NES RGB kit. And it's not in my kit. This, this is some of the parts. Electrolytic capacitors in there. There's no ceramic capacitor. These pit, these parts also came with it. And there's a couple of resistors and um, pin headers and voltage regulators and some sockets. There's nothing in there. I didn't get one. I might have lost it. It's possible. But I found one marked 224. And where that needs to go that capacitor there you see eight and on the board it's marked as a 0.1 microfarad which is 100 nanofarads so i need to get that out and replace it with this i've replaced the capacitor and uh it doesn't work <laughs> um I, I'm not sure what to say at this point. I, I think I know what the problem is now. Um, and um, I know this is uh, that Tim's put a lot of work into this. 
and uh, I don't know what, what sort of reward or um, financial benefit he gets from it. I'm sure that the um, drain on his time is extreme, to say the least. But as an end user, um, it's not something I would recommend other people, you know, your general um, run-of-the-mill tinkerer does uh, this mod. It is... Um, it is an amazing mod. It is an amazing feat of engineering that uh, that Tim's come up with. Um, and it's something you find quite often that um, really clever engineers, um, people that can put these things together, um, working on their own, will be often lacking in other areas and... Um, documentation for me has been one um so the uh the the things that came with this kit cap kit which has got um voltage regulator in it and a load of cable ties that's that's fine uh it was missing the 220 nanofarad cap but that could be me that's that's lost that it also came with these bits um to make uh the rgb port on the back of the machine and, and an audio socket and these bits of paper which i didn't really i didn't really take a lot of notice of um because i thought they were just stickers i saw these two which are stickers i think um button combos reset key start select a and b and there's there's a yeah they are stickers and there's another sticker in here that I didn't spot. And it says, front loader model only, isolate PPU pin, pin 22 from NES motherboard, check product description notes. What product description <laughs> notes? I don't know where. It, it doesn't give you a URL. It doesn't... <laughs> All right. I don't want to be the one that's too down, but on this project because it, I really do appreciate that it's a gr it's a great thing. It's not a cheap thing. FPGAs are expensive chips, and these boards are not cheap to buy. Um, you know, I, I that board costs more than an is. <laughs> when it when something I put in a machine costs more than the machine. I start to hesitate. I, I would hesitate to do this for myself. This is not my my not my NES. So, getting back to the point um, on documentation. So, the reason that I found this fault is by googling for uh, other people have, that have the same problem, and it's to do with the. It's still to do with the reset timing. The board is not ready to start up by the time the NES has started up and therefore the um, board just doesn't start up, which is what that flashing seventh LED is. The zero LED is the one that shows that the board is not started. When I start this up, you can see that flashing and eventually it will go solid. But by then zero is, um, means that there's no pallet selected. Um, and it's not working. So I found this thread on Schmup's forum of somebody that's got a similar problem attempting to install NES RGB V4, which is what mine is, and into a front loader uh, with the same problems. And um, it goes through quite a few posts of people trying different solutions like different value capacitors on that C8 position uh, with little success um, eventually Tim Worthington pops into the conversation and he points out that there are two batches of these boards it's, this is the second batch 2238 is the second batch some of the second batch have a, a firmware on that it has a bug I think I, I've read this a couple of times and I still don't know which one I've got so I looked at this and, th and thought 
I need to update the firmware. So I, I grabbed my serial TTL adapter and a pin header that was in the kit, got ready to, uh, to start installing an update for the firmware on this thing. And, um, and I thought, no, I've, I've read some other things on here where people have had a, have thought they had a solution. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll go for that. And it's not been a solution. So what I'll do is I'll read a bit further. So I read a bit further and Tim comes up with this solution. Uh, I finally got hold of a front loader NES with this problem. It's a silly bug in the FPGA firmware. When I enabled the PLL, I mistakenly connected the FPGA PLL to reset, or oh, PLL reset to the console reset signal. So when the console reset, time is extended by changing the capacitor on the motherboard. The reset time of the FPGA is extended too. Fortunately, there is a simple fix. I, I debate that. There is a redundant reset signal generated on the NES RGB board already. This is because the Famicom consoles don't reset the PPU. The reset pin is tied to the five volt supply on these consoles. The fix is just to cut the reset pin off the NES RGB board assembly, isolate it and connect it to plus five volts. Here's the procedure. So you have to chop out one of the pins, cover that corresponding part of the socket and then solder a 1K resistor between pin 40 and pin 22. I, I mean, it's not a complicated procedure, but I've just built this thing. I don't like chopping bits out of it. <laughs> and if that's what you have to do, then the instructions here of isolate pin, that's that doesn't cover nearly all of that. So what? which one? <laughs> what do I do? Do I just isolate pin 22? Do, do I? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to record this bit when I. Oh, not look. I don't like doing this. Do not like this. Okay, so I'm put this back in now. It should be a white screen on composite. So first of all, I'm just gonna try this with internal. So this is not using the RGB board. And the game works. Now if I switch that over to external. Back screen. All right, what's it doing? Am I still getting flashes? Yes. It's exactly the bloody same. This is quite frustrating. Just make sure there's no continuity. Well, that's a pig, it's still making contact. Obviously my insulation job was poor. Please work. Oh, oh, it worked. 
and the cartridge is not quite in properly. Come on. Oh. Hold it down. It's working. Yes. It's working. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm a bit happier now. I was getting a bit depressed. <laughs> I'm so happy to see that. Make sure I'm on the right selection. We are on external video. Oh, thank God for that. Now the next test is, will this work with the crappy Mega Drive cable? that I have, which is truly crappy. And it goes that way up. Take that out. Fingers crossed. Yes! It works. Ah. <gasps> <laughs> it works. I thought I'd do this in a day. It's taken me, it's taken me three or four. And well, not quite three or four. I was building a barbecue for one of those days, but it's taken me a lot longer than I thought it would. And every time you do a new project, something you've never done before, um, you have expectations about how long it will take and <laughs> it's never, you'll never meet those expectations. That is fantastic. All right, I've still got a little bit of work to do to wire in the pallet selection and things like that. So I've connected the switch here with these three wires that come through here and to those pads there and that should give pallet selection on that back switch. You can do it with the controller with button combinations. It's that, I don't I don't think it's that important. I think it's the kind of thing that you'll switch a couple of times and then probably won't bother with. And then you might sit on the controller and, and make it do something that you didn't expect and then forget the button combinations. So I quite like the idea of it being on a switch um, and it saves a little bit of messing around with um, soldering extra wires in. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is, put it back together and see where we are. Okay, so it's, it's back together. It still works. Look at that. Um, I haven't screwed the lid on properly yet. And look, the, uh, the lid has spent a couple of days in the sun. It's better. I'm gonna um, probably put it out again over the weekend. Uh, while it's sunny just to get that last little bit of green out but the um the stain around the front is mostly gone looking good oh pallet switch i think that's the standard that's the garish which is what it was when i was testing earlier and that's something else uh, they are labeled natural oh this is natural that's improved i quite like that and that is garish. I can't tell the difference between garish. I'm switching quickly between garish and natural. Can't tell the difference. But I do like improved. It took me a while to get around to doing this, partly because the plan for this machine changed. Originally, this was meant to be just a repair and refurb job for Mateus. But once we decided on the RGB mod and waited for it to come into stock and then to be delivered, it was just a matter of a few months before I got myself organised enough to start. I've enjoyed doing this mod though. It's always fun to discover how to do something you've never done before. 
This isn't a hideously complicated mod. There's no SMD soldering or, thankfully, firmware wrangling. I stand by my earlier comments about the instructions and have gone back and taken another look at this. If you search for the RGB NES mod instructions, you'll end up at Tim Worthington's website, etim.net.au slash NESRGB, and there you will find the instructions for an earlier version of the board. Lower down that page, you'll find a link for the notes for version four page, and a side note saying the installation guides are coming soon at the end of August. It doesn't say which August though. But just to skip back to my initial mistake at the start of this episode where I forgot to solder the J3 jumper to supply power to the board, the alternative to soldering J3 is to install a separate 5 volt regulator and run the board from that, which I knew I didn't need to do as the new Merlin Shaw replacement power board would be plenty beefy enough to run both the NES and the RGB board. It does mention it in the pinout and jumper diagram, but as I was working from a different schematic I missed it again here. The instructions for fixing the reset bug situation on certain models and board revisions is not linked anywhere on the instructions page. It's in a help section I could only find by googling directly to it. Look, I've talked about the instructions enough and I might sound like I'm complaining and that's only because I'm old and that's just what my voice sounds like now. But I am truly impressed with this RGB board that Tim Worthington created. The way it works seamlessly with the NES is amazing. Coupled with Merlinshaw's superb power board replacement, really needs a better name mate, this is a great solution to getting a perfect video out of your NES. I know there's also an HDMI mod for the NES, but I would personally be happy with an RGB board for my own one, if I could afford it. Seriously, when are these chips going to be cheap again? The improvement to the image is spectacular, and hopefully you can see that from the screen captures I made along the way. If you'd like one of these power boards, I have three here I'll send out to the first three people in the UK that request one via my Discord, link in the description. They are bare boards that do include all the surface mounted parts and just need connectors. I'll throw in some 2200 microfarad caps as I seem to have a few spare. Thank you once again to Merlin Shaw for reaching out in the first place and helping to make this no cut mod a possibility. This is a great idea and the way it integrates with the Tim Worthington RGB NES board just makes so much sense. The link to Merlin's GitHub is in the description and you'll find that he's made the whole project open source so you can download the Gerbers and get some boards made at the PCB factory of your choice. And a thank you to Matthias for being so patient with me. By the way Matthias, I put a new slot in your NES and it now works perfectly with the car up or down. Keep your eyes open for the next episode, which will be a ZX Harlequin 128K build to go in the charity Mectrum case. Fingers crossed that all goes well and we will have one of the charity machines completed. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.